A new state law combats banning books. One local librarian says she's proud Illinois is leading the movement. Plus, the state sends money to Chicago to help with migrant arrivals over the last few weeks. Meanwhile, suburbs around the Windy City crack down on buses making unannounced drop-offs. And a moving company reports more people are leaving Illinois to live elsewhere. Only two other states in the nation saw more outbound movers. Live from WTVO 17, this is Eyewitness News at 5. Good evening, I'm Mimi Murphy. And I'm Eric Wilson. A new state law is in effect that bans book bans. Librarians across Illinois are praising the move. Drea Baroni spoke to one public librarian about the legislation. And Drea, what did she have to say? Yeah, Eric, Mimi, this is the first law like this in the nation. The bill signed by J.B. Pritzker stops state-funded libraries from banning or removing books because of religious or partisan disapproval. It comes as a response to the backlash schools and libraries face over controversial books. In fact, the American Library Association says that attempts to censor books reached a 20-year high in 2022. A local librarian I talked to says she's proud that Illinois is the trailblazer for this new law. To say no, in Illinois, we look at the ethics, we look at what is best for our communities, we support our library staff to stand up to people who want to censor and challenge the materials we have in our library, and we believe that it is valuable to have diverse collections that reflect the needs and interests of the whole community. I'll have more on what this new law means for librarians and community members coming up a little later at 6. Eric? Thanks, Drea. We'll see you then. The man accused of killing a six-year-old Palestinian-American boy and hurting the boy's mother appears in a Will County courtroom. Wadi Al-Fayoumi was stabbed to death at his family's home in Plainfield in October. His mother was also stabbed. She survived. Will County prosecutors say the family's landlord, 71-year-old Joseph Zuba, attacked the two because the Al-Fayoumis are Muslims. Stabbings happened shortly after the Hamas attack in Israel. Mourners gathered outside the Will County Courthouse demand justice. Wadi was not just a son. He was a friend. He was a child. He was a student who loved life. He was a bright soul filled with dreams and aspirations. We mourn the loss of his promising future by an act of Islamophobic violence. Wadi's accused killer is due back in court March 7th. The man's charged with hate crimes along with first degree murder and attempted first degree murder. The state continues to support Chicago after an influx of migrant arrivals. A new intake center is under construction near the city of Chicago's bus landing zone. This comes as work continues on a 220-person shelter in the little village area of the city. The state's also extending its food contract for shelters through January 15th. That's expected to cost $2 million. This announcement builds on the $478 million in funding committed to the state's migrant arrivals response plan. Meanwhile, more suburbs are cracking down on the unannounced arrival of buses dropping off migrants. Hinsdale, Woodstock, Joliet and Buffalo Grove joined a growing list of communities to approve regulations on the arrival of migrants. The move comes following the arrival of 11 buses in Hinsdale in just 11 days. Each bus averaged about 45 asylum seekers. As the weather turns dangerously cold, <coughs> migrant drop-offs unannounced in Hinsdale could endanger lives unless we do something. These buses will keep coming, unannounced, at least through March. The owner, operator, or driver of any motor vehicle planning to bring migrants to Hinsdale will have to fill out an application to do so. If that application is falsified, the village could then seize or impound any unapproved vehicle and impose a penalty of $750 per passenger. U.S. House Republicans speak at the southern border to highlight what they say are the Biden administration's failed policies. 2023 saw a record number of migrants cross the border illegally. Last month, Border Patrol agents faced around 10,000 illegal crossings a day. Republicans say the White House has done little to deal with the ongoing problem, and they're not budging. With this congressional delegation coming along with the Speaker of the House, the time is now for us to, to send the message that uh, it, it's either we fix this right now or um, we suffer for another year. We see the border package as non-negotiable. It has to be a border security package first and foremost before we look abroad or overseas. 
The Biden administration says since May last year, 460,000 migrants in the U.S. illegally have been deported. A White House spokesperson adds the administration continues to work with Senate negotiators on a new plan for border security. Governor J.B. Pritzker has appointed the next director of the Illinois Department of Children and Family Services. Youth justice and child welfare expert Heidi Mueller will take on the role. Mueller's appointment is pending Senate approval. She currently serves as director of the Illinois Department of Juvenile Justice. The current director of DCFS, Mark Smith, will continue to serve in his role through this month. Mueller will assume the director role on February 1st. Smith announced his plans to depart DCFS in October. About 7,000 pounds of ground beef are recalled because of E. coli bacteria. The Department of Agriculture says it discovered the contamination during routine testing. There are not currently any cases of illness. The meat's likely still sitting in fridges and freezers. Valley Meats in Coal Valley, Illinois, produced the beef December 22nd. It was shipped to Illinois, Indiana, Iowa, and Michigan to restaurants and what the U.S. Food Safety and Inspection Service calls institutional users. More people are moving out of Illinois than moving in. U-Haul's growth index report for 2023 put Illinois third in the country for outbound movers last year. Only California and Massachusetts saw more people leave. U-Haul calculates each state's net loss by comparing the number of one-way moving trucks arriving and leaving the region. According to the latest U.S. Census estimates, about 33,000 residents have moved out of Illinois since July 2022. Southern Illinois firefighters save a pet after it's hit by a car. Last Saturday, firefighters in Jackson County were called to an area off Route 3 after a report of a dog being hit by a car. First responders say after the dog was hit, it crawled into a long culvert. One go. end of the culvert was crushed and there wasn't enough room for the dog to get out. That's when firefighters started digging and used the jaws of life to widen it enough for the dog to escape. It's not clear how injured the dog is, but the local fire department board president says the pup was happy to be back with its owner. The Iowa caucuses are less than two weeks away. Up next, candidates ramp up their campaign efforts as the former president still leads the polls. And coming up at six, questions still remain after a plane carrying migrants landed at Rockford's airport over the weekend. We'll hear from Winnebago County Sheriff on the possibility of future flights. And our temperatures stayed in the 30s thanks to some cloud cover out there this afternoon. We should be able to see a little more sunshine tomorrow, but clouds are quick to move back in for the weekend as we see a return of some winter weather. When to expect our next chance for snow coming up in the first warm forecast a little later. You're watching Eyewitness News, your home team with Eric Wilson, Mimi Murphy, Scott Leber, and Chief Meteorologist Candace King. Republican presidential candidates are less than two weeks away from the Iowa caucuses, which offer the first look at who voters want to run in the election. Those candidates are getting in some last minute campaigning with former President Trump, the clear front runner in the state. Here's ABC's Rena Roy. The countdown is on to the Iowa caucuses. Republican candidates hitting the campaign trail in this home stretch. The caucuses less than two weeks away will be the first time Republican voters get their say. The candidates also getting an opportunity to create some momentum. Donald Trump is running on his issues. Nikki Haley's running on her donors issues. I'm running on your issues. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis going all in on the state, visiting all 99 counties. But he's losing ground to former U.N. Ambassador Nikki Haley, who's rising in the polls in both Iowa and New Hampshire. If you join us in this movement, if you join us in this fight, I promise you, our best days are yet to come. Former President Trump still maintaining a commanding lead, polls showing he's more than 30 points ahead of his rivals. Well, it's crunch time. It's crunch time for the candidates because if you can't make it in Iowa or New Hampshire, I doubt very seriously that you will get a boost in South Carolina. A debate being held in Iowa just days before the caucuses. Trump once again skipping out, instead announcing his own town hall at the same time. This all comes as he fights to keep his name on the primary ballots in Colorado and Maine. His team appealing a ruling by Maine's Secretary of State that bars him from the state's ballot over his role in the January 6th insurrection. The qualifications for president under the United States Constitution are not a menu. They're not optional. My job is to follow the Constitution and the law. 
The former president is also expected to appeal a similar ban by the Colorado Supreme Court. Meanwhile, President Biden is set to ramp up his campaign for re-election starting this weekend. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Smoke flurries may start flying around here soon. Coming up after the break, we'll hear from Candace on when we could see some more winter weather later next week. Now, your first worn weather forecast from Chief Meteorologist Candace King. It's a little slick out there early this morning as we dealt with some showers, a drizzle, and some freezing drizzle from time to time late last night and very early this morning. So that did create a little thin glaze of ice in a couple spots out there. But we take a live look with our SkyTrack camera on the northeast end of Rockford, our Javon Bay Hospital camera, much more quiet, just still dealing with the cloud cover here for us late this afternoon and evening. And that again held our temperatures in the 30s, although we were still above our average high for today. 33 in Rockford, 34 in Freeport, 33 in Monroe. A little bit of a breeze out there has dropped that wind chill factor down just a bit. 33 for our weather watcher Terry in Genoa. 30 at the dew point temperature and a westerly wind now at 7 miles per hour. Well, we've been fairly quiet for much of the afternoon. There's a weak upper level system just to the north of us moving through Wisconsin. That could give us a flurry or a light snow shower here over the next couple of hours. Nothing too significant, I don't think. But in, in, in some spots, we may see the visibility drop just a bit, especially late this evening as some of that flurry activity activity moves through. Little to no accumulation is expected with that and temperatures will settle down into the low 20s. Now I do think we hold on to plenty of cloud cover here throughout much of this evening, clearing out just around sunrise tomorrow, but some of those clouds could hang on just a bit into tomorrow afternoon, but I do anticipate a little more sunshine by the afternoon. Winds will turn to the southwest for our Thursday. Temperatures are back into the low 30s. Again, we see the cloud come back, cloud cover come back in for Friday, but most of Friday going to stay dry. Maybe a flurry light snow shower Friday night, then into Saturday. So following the weekend into next week, things get a little more active. We've got a couple of light snow showers that come in once we get into Saturday. Same thing for Sunday, some minor accumulations with that. And then again, keeping an eye on that system going into actually a couple systems going into next week. So 32 degrees, that's where we'll end up for tomorrow. Some morning cloud cover, and then skies will turn partly cloudy. Winds, they're a little on the breezy side, first from the northeast, and then it'll actually shift around to the southeast once we get into tomorrow afternoon. Now, a couple of things we're keeping an eye on going into next week. That impactful storm system early next week during the Monday afternoon, Monday night, and Tuesday time frame, that is a given. We are going to see some sort of storm system come through during that time. Biggest impacts as of right now. Now you've got wind and colder temperatures. Snow is possible. And as we get a little bit further into the week, towards the weekend and into next week, if that track holds, snow will become likely going into that time, but that track could change. Then we've got a few more systems towards the end of next week and even going into next weekend where we could have a few more snow opportunities coming up. So this has not changed. That dip in the jet stream, that strong trough of low pressure developing out to the the west regenerates the jet stream, allows those strong winds to develop. You get that area of low pressure to track and uh, develop and move through. But again, that storm track still in question. So the things that we know going into this, that impactful storm system, the colder temperatures, the return of the wintry pattern, storm track and the overall intensity, along with our precipitation type and just how much. But when we look at this kind of as a whole, we're starting to see a little more of a consensus that would favor parts of southern Wisconsin and northern Illinois on the colder side of things, which would give us the potential for some accumulating snow. Then on the back side of that, a lot of wind through Tuesday night. So again, that Monday afternoon through Tuesday night time frame, really something to keep an eye on. Until then, quiet here for Thursday, Friday, some light snow for the weekend. Temperatures will stay in the 30s here as we head into next week. We know you and the rest of the team will keep us updated as we get closer to that. Candace, thanks. Reagan's in next with sports. The Bears get ready for their season finale Sunday in Green Bay. And the Chicago Bulls hope for a comeback win after last night's poor performance. Reagan will preview that game after the break. Now sports with Reagan Holgate. Whether it's a win or a loss on Sunday, the Bears season will come to an end in Green Bay, but they have an opportunity to play spoiler and end the Packers chances at the playoffs. And after a pretty up and down season, it would be nice for things to end on a high note for the Bears, especially for QB1. 
We know that Green Bay's playing for a lot at stake. They're playing for a playoff spot right now. So I just think with, you know, kind of all that on the table, I think, you know, it'd be great, a great feeling to, you know, end the season off with a win in Lambeau. We're going to keep it about us. You know, there's always that that factor of, hey, you know, there's uh, an important game for them, for sure, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. An important game for us, for sure. And, uh, you know, we're going to leave it at that. We're, it's a rival. And uh, we're excited about going up there and playing some football. Now, another Bears player received some national recognition this week. That's rookie cornerback Tyreek Stevenson. He was named the NFC Defensive Player of the Week after his impressive outing against the Falcons. Stevenson totaled five tackles, two interceptions, and four pass breakups in the Bears' 20-point victory over Atlanta. Stevenson's four interceptions this season are tied for a team best, along with Jalen Johnson and Tremaine Edmonds. The Bulls are in the Big Apple tonight to take on their conference rival in prime time. They lost a tough one last night as Joel Embiid dropped a triple-double. And to top it off, the Bears could not get their long-range shooting going. While they have to get ready to take on a good Knicks squad, head coach Billy Donovan is hopeful that last night's loss will be a teaching moment for his squad. I'm not a big uh, flush game guy, you know. Um, I just think there's always something to be learned in any of these situations, but you know, the we have to move forward from this. The physicality part of it, I thought was the, the tone that we kind of at least tried to set early wasn't good. And then I think what happened was it got worse with our inability to make some shots and we just, you know, we're gonna have nights like that. Well, let's hope tonight is not like that. You can watch that game right here on WTO as it tips off at 730. And it doesn't get much bigger than this game in boys basketball tonight. Guilford is undefeated and currently leading the Knicks 10 Conference, but Belvedere North not far behind at 5-1. and one. Those two will go head-to-head. -head. Make sure to join us at 9-10 and 10 for the highlights. That's sports. We'll be right back. First warning, interactive radar brought to us by Rockford Auto Glass and more. Pretty quiet out there, although we may see a flurry, a light snow shower too here as we go through the rest of this evening. Otherwise, our skies will stay mostly cloudy. A little sunshine coming in for tomorrow afternoon. Highs in the low 30s. We've got some snow moving in for the weekend and potentially early next week. All right, thanks, Candace. And thank you for spending some time with us. Stay safe.